I know that it's quite difficult sometimes to think about trying to, for a student to try to apply for a research ethics application, but there are some things and um, that you can do to help the process much easier, not just for you, but as well as the reviewers who are looking at your application. So here are my top six tips for you when you prepare your research ethics application. The first tip, always try to write for a non-expert lay audience. You should always assume that the people who are reading your application in terms of the reviewers do not know um, our lay audiences and do not know the topic that you're trying to write about in your particular research. So always try to avoid technical terms and try to explain the context of the research as much as you can for the reviewer for the reviewers to be able to understand what you're trying to do. This will help the reviewers to um, smoothly review your application and the likelihood of them um, coming back with less comments will be increased. Here's my second tip. Always avoid language that's too technical. This is not just for the application itself, but also in terms of the documentation that you'll be um, giving to the participants to read. So one document that requires a lot of um, consideration in terms of using lay language is the participant information sheet. The, the purpose of the participation information sheet is to tell the participants what you are exactly trying to do and then trying to get them to come on board and um, be part of your research. Therefore, it's crucial that they understand um, what's going on by using lay language that, they, that they, they, they can understand. My third tip would be um, always try to explain the cultural norms and expectations that you're doing your research in. This is especially true if your research is in a global health and development context because you'll be doing it in different countries and these countries may or may not have um, cultural norms that are different to the, um, the, to the UK or British um, cultural norms. The reviewers will most likely be based in the UK and therefore they'll be using UK cultural norms to judge and review your application. If there is any deviation from that, what you need to do is explain to them what is it exactly that is different and how then that actually influences how you actually design and will conduct the research. That needs to be um, explained for the re uh, reviewer's benefit. My fourth tip would be always try to get informed consent. I know that in certain circumstances, informed consent is almost impossible. For example, covert research. In a lot of settings, informed consent is the norm and we try to get that. If you are able to get informed consent, always get it written down. This is for an audit trail so that you've got, you've got um, evidence that the participants have actually agreed to participate in your research. I do understand that in certain circumstances and in certain countries and communities, written consent may not be possible for a multitude of reasons. If that's the case, verbal consent is also uh, will, will be an appropriate method to obtain consent from the participants themselves. The best practice in, uh, currently would be if you're using if you're using the uh, procedure of getting verbal consent, then what you need to do is to get a witness to be present that will be able to um, read the information sheet, uh, the contents of the information sheet to the participants, and then when they agree verbally, get the witness to sign the consent form on the participant's behalf. If not, then what you have to do is you will have to be um, the one reading out the information so that even though you're getting verbal consent, the participants still un will be getting information so that their consent, despite being verbal, is an informed one because they are, do understand what's involved in the research. My fifth um, tip for you will be to always think about how you would handle the data and it, how you would store the data. There are two uh, time periods where you think about storing and handling data. One is in the short term and the other one will be the long term. 
For the short-term storage, usually you'll be collecting data in a field, so you have to think about the security as well as the confidentiality of your short-term storage. Then you have to start thinking about how you're going to back up the um, data. Are you going to back up where you are in the field, or is it going to be backed up when you reach, let's say for example, we return to the university. And you, have, you also have to think about the frequency of the backup, not just because uh, it's important to save the data, but also think about what if someone um, with malicious content gets hold of that data and uses it for um, sort of um, harmful purposes. In terms of long-term storage, um, many times uh, people would want to use the research data over and over again for perhaps um, not just for publishing for your dissertation and thesis, but also maybe for publishing a piece of paper or reanalyzing data for policy purposes. So you have to then think about the security and how you would manage long-term storage. Usually what we would re recommend and we would actually encourage students as well as supervisors to think about is the use of a data custodian. The data custodian is the person who will be in charge of the data once it's being stored long term and will be responsible for its um, use as well as its disposal at the end of the lifespan of the data itself. Now the sixth tip I have for you is if you are in doubt as to any aspect of the research ethics um, process, always ask and seek advice from your supervisors as well as the research ethics review committee members because they have been dealing with these issues much longer and much more often than you it's always good to seek advice from them and always ask very specific questions and always explain the context of why you're asking that particular question and always take on board their suggestions so that you, the likelihood of your um, application going through uh, much smoother will be increased. All right, I hope that uh, six tips will help you in preparing your research ethics application and good luck. <laughs>